This is Romance for broadcast Saturday, October 27. Now, from Hollywood, Romance. Romance. Transcribed stories of love and adventure, of comedy and crisis, of conflict and human emotion. Today, three stories of lost letters. It is written by Anthony Ellis and stars Virginia Gregg and John Daner in Lovely Dead Letter. Take a guy with a job. He likes it or he doesn't like it. Or maybe he just does it because it's a job. I don't know about you, but take me. I work in the dead letter department, U.S. Post Office. I like it. It's quiet, and I'm a quiet guy. There's a couple of us in there, and we do the same thing every day. The other fellow's Herbert Rude. To him, it's a job. Just a job. Same thing. Open the letter, read it. No return address, no dough, no nothing. Burn it. You'd think some of those dopes would remember to put a return address on. You know, boy, I think I'm going to get me a transfer on a delivery route again. This dulls me good. So, like I say, Herbert Rude. To him, the job's just a job. But me, I like it. Why? Because I got imagination, that's why. Letters ending up in my department. They got a message, a story. Someday I'm going to write a book. I could write a book with what's in those letters. Of course, Herbert can't figure it out. What's the matter with you, Manfred? Every day you bring your lunch, you sit in here working, you trying to make overtime or something? You don't make no overtime. Come on out, we can get in a fast game of snooker. What am I going to tell him? Every guy's got his ways. Mine's taking my lunch to the office and reading letters in between work. It's not the same thing then, reading. I kind of see things. I'm almost there, you know. I got a gift for it. I don't remember when it first happened, but like the other day, I was biting into a chicken salad sandwich, and I opened a letter and started in to read it. Dear Leonard, when I think of what you've done... All I can, I can say, say is, is you're a dirty rat. How come you think a girl like me is going to spend the fruits of her day sitting around waiting for a bum like you? Believe me, Leonard, I got lots of fellas think the sun never sets on yours truly, and that's for sure. I'm giving you one more chance to give me some kind of story which is going to be another lie anyway. So meet me at the corner of 4th and Hamilton on Tuesday at Six. I'll be off from work then. Yours truly, Alma. Hi. Oh, it's you. <laughs> Who else? You told me to be here at six. You gonna start right in being nasty? <laughs> Who's nasty? I I'm here, that's all. Don't do me any favors. Well, for fish sake, I'm what? not in the habit of standing on corners being insulted by a man. Oh, honey. Why didn't you answer my last letter? That's all. Why? Well, I was out of town. I never got it till I got back, and that was yesterday. I got your other letter at the same time. That's how come no, I'm here. Oh, that's a laugh out of town. Blonde or redhead? Well, I'm telling you, I was out of town. It was a job. You think I'm going to believe that? Well, sure. It's, it's true. Just another lie, like the last one. Oh, honey, I love you. I wouldn't lie. I wouldn't give you the satisfaction of lying to me, Mr. Podmore. Will you give me a chance to explain? You wanted me to meet you here to explain. Now, give me a chance to explain. I'm waiting. Explain. Well, there's a guy in Middlebury. He's got a job up there for me. Wanted me to take a look over the prospects, so I did. And? Well, maybe I'll take the job. You want to move away? Well, it looks like a good thing. I'm considering it. Oh. Does that uh, matter to you? Why should it matter? I got plenty of dates. You're not the only fish in the sea. Oh, I thought maybe it mattered. Alma? 
yeah. You want to have some dinner with me? Maybe we could go to a show, and then afterwards oh, we sure. can... Oh, sure. After. What? You think maybe I'm forgetting the last time? Oh, no, thank <laughs> you, Mr. Clammy Hands. I'm not that kind of a girl. You want to do some necking, you take out one of your other girls. Oh. I'm sure they'd enjoy it. You never let a guy finish. Not you, I don't. Okay, okay, that's the way you want it. That's just the way. Okay, that's the way. So you won't mind me telling them now what I wanted to say after? I don't care what you say. Doesn't matter, pee in the pod to me. Okay, doesn't matter. So I'll tell you anyhow. I, I got something here. I bought it yesterday. It's a ring. Yeah, it's a ring. That's what I wanted to give you after the show. Kind of saving it for a surprise. Oh, Leonard, it's beautiful. Do you like it? Leonard, I... Oh, Leonard. What? Oh, no, it's okay. Hey, no, honey, I've honey. Been so awful. All the time. Listen, were... listen, I love you. If you hadn't been here tonight, I'd have died. I'd have just died. Oh, come on. What do you say? We have something to eat. We got a lot of plans to make with that new job. We could get married pretty quick, you know. Oh, boy. You sure rush a girl. <laughs> Why not? Oh, Leonard. And that's the way it happened. At least to me. That's the way. Of course, he never did get the letter because she forgot to put his address on and she didn't have a return. I don't know. Maybe Leonard went looking for her, maybe not. You kind of wonder, though. There's all kinds of letters get burned. You get so you wonder about all the sadness around. And maybe they're not sad, because how do you know how things turn out anyway? Like the one I read yesterday. It was dated September 19th, 1943. And what happened was, he got lost in an old apartment building when it was delivered, and fell behind a radiator in the lobby, so when they tore the radiator out, they found the letter. We got it in the dead letter office. He started like this. Dear Ricky, here is a letter which was sent to you care of me because this was the last address you gave when hiding out from the cops. It gives me great pleasure to surprise you with what is clipped on this note because you are a dirty, no-good fink. It couldn't happen to a bigger chiseler. When you read it, I hope you drop dead. Uh, yours truly, Alfie the Grunt. Greetings. You have been... You have been... Made as you... The nuts... They can't do this to me. Can you tell them, baby. Swifty. Honey, baby lamb. Swifty. I've seen an ad for a fur coat. You hear me calling you? Yeah, hey, boss. Right here, boy. Look at this here. Baby head. lamb. Hey. Show me a couple of G's. A gorgeous thing. It's You shut your the... trap. I got enough trouble. Honey, baby. I don't get it. What's the president want to write to you for? I've been drafted. You're kidding. Well, you can read. I've been drafted. Oh, baby, honey, they can't do that to you. Uh, you got nothing to worry about, boss. They'll make you 4 F. All you got to do is tell them about, about your hernia. It says I got a report tomorrow at 8 a.m. The biggest job we ever pulled set for tomorrow, and I got a report for a physical at 8 a.m. Oh, what do you care, honey lamb? Send the mouthpiece over to fix it for you. What kind of crazy dame are you anyway? It's a federal rap. This army stuff nah, serious. Gee, I bet you'd look cute in a the uniform. Them big shoulders. Boy, I could go for you all over again. That's all you think about. Swifty. You gotta get the boys together right away. Uh, sure, Ricky, sure. Tell them we gotta change the time for the job. Oh, you, you, you can't do that, boss. Well, we won't get another chance if you do that. It took enough trouble figuring out the schedule. You put it off and everything will go wrong. So what am I supposed to do? Not show up from a physical? You want I should be called a draft dodger? Trouble with you, Swifty. You ain't got no patriotism. Didn't I tell you to make me a drink? No. You calling me a liar? Honey Lamb, I ain't calling you a liar. You never told me to make you a drink. Daddy Swift. Uh, I yeah. told you to make me a drink a minute ago. I got ears, you never. I'm telling you again, go make me a drink. Okay, okay. Look who's giving big orders all of a sudden. General McArthur. Uh, don't get smart. Hey, the boys ain't gonna like it, boss. Did you think maybe I like it? 
Who's getting drafted? Oh, well, it's a, it's a big job, boss. A couple of hundred grand if we could pull it off. Well, you know, whiskey's getting scared. You're telling me something I don't know. Well, how, 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 about, how about maybe we, we pull off the job like we said, 7 o'clock tomorrow, and you show up late, say you got held up. How late? I got tickets to Mexico City on the 9 o'clock plane. Feel like this and we'll be hot for months. You want me to walk into the army physical with every cop in town looking for me? You nuts. Uh, uh, what, what are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know. Well, if you're in Mexico City, how, how, they, how, how are they going to get you on, on a draft rack? What's the matter? You think I'm yellow? I'm a good American boy. I want to come back to this good old United States when the heat's off. Oh, gee, I, I don't know, boys. The boys aren't going to like it. I'm going to like it. Yeah, this will make you feel better, love a baby lamb. It's nice and strong. Yeah, you're a good kid, Moo. Good as they come. Oh, give me a kiss, honey, baby. <laughs> I tell you, kid. I tell you. I'm going to do it. What? What are you going to do, boy? I'm going to take that physical. I'm going to take it, and if I pass, which I won't on account of my hernia, I'm going to fight for Uncle Sam. Honey, what am I going to do? Stick around and wait for me. I'll be back around five after they give me a 4F. Tell the boys the job's got to wait, Swifty. I got a duty to do. <laughs> Well, to make a long story short, Ricky took his army physical and they accepted him. That's the way it might have happened anyway, as I read the letter, but I guess not really because Ricky never got that letter and he pulled a job with the boys the next morning. I remember reading about it. He tried to knock over a liquor warehouse, got caught. Being number one city public enemy, Ricky went to the jug. They'll be out in 1965. You'd be surprised at the kind of letters I have to read before I burn them. It's not all of them get under my skin, but a few. I never quite figure out how I get to be the people in the letter. But I guess it's like I said, I got a calling. Maybe I should go and <laughs> be a fortune teller somewhere. I take the letter I read at lunch today. Address unknown. No return address. I, I could feel it. I knew what might have happened. I knew it. My dear Linda, I somehow don't think that you will be surprised to hear from me. For the past two or three years, you have been constantly in my thoughts. Perhaps there is something to telepathic communication. In any event, I am writing to you in the hope that you will receive this in time for my arrival on Saturday. I am taking the plane from New York and will arrive at 1.30 your time. We made a mistake, my darling. We took each other for granted. I know now that my life has meant nothing to me since we left each other. I love you. I want to think... I must believe that you still love me. I want you to meet me at the airport. Perhaps you're married. I don't know. But at least we can see each other, talk and possibly give ourselves the chance that we want so foolishly lost. I love you, Stephen. Morning, darling. Anything in the mail? Oh, no. A bill from Tucker's and Harriet's wedding announcement. Oh, fine. You had your coffee? Yes. Did your mother get off okay? Yes. That's fine. Throw me the paper, will you? Thanks. That's my husband. Four years married husband. I wonder what he'd think if I showed him the letter. I suppose he'd laugh. He never knew Stephen. I don't remember even telling him about it. They won. That's good, dear. Do you want some eggs? No, no, thanks. I'm starting my diet today. Old Ben boy's got to take off a few pounds. I think it's silly. Yeah, well, I get that roll in the middle and won't think it is. Here, pinch me here. Right here. See? That's no muscle. What are you going to do today? Oh, I don't know. Might play golf with Charlie if it's okay with you. I don't mind. Okay. We got anything on tonight? The Simpsons asked us over. They're having a few people in. 
Okay. What time will you be going to play golf? Mm, oh, about one or two, I guess. Why? Want to use the car? Oh, I thought I might do some shopping uptown. Well, sure, I can go with Charlie. He can pick me up. I don't know if I'll go or not. It's all right with me. I might. Mm, you got a letter? Hmm? Oh, just an old friend. Mm. Nobody you know. Uh, that's nice. Any orange juice, honey? Can't to be too many calories in that. I'll get you some. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Don't mind me. I'm not well, feeling right this morning. Was your mother? No, no. You sure? No, she was fine. Looking forward to the weekend. What's the time, Ben? It's 11. Oh. Ah, anything you want me to do around the house? No, I don't think so. Okay, well, I thought I'd fix up that old fishing reel. Needs cleaning. Got sand in it last time. All right. I'll see you then. Ben. Yeah? Are you happy with me? About us? Oh. Well, sure. That's a funny question. Do you take me for granted? Mm, sure. Yeah, I do. You're Lindy. We're married. I know it. You know it. And that's it. Oh. You feel okay? Yes. I'm all right. Mm. Well, I'll see you, honey. I should have waited. I should have made sure. It was too soon after you'd gone, Stephen. I was still in love with you when I met Ben. What do they call it? Bounce? No. Rebound. I remember the places we went to. My favorite places. Quiet. Holding hands across the table. Not saying much. Just looking. Being happy. I love you. I want to think. I must believe that you still love me. I shouldn't have married Ben. I was in love with you, Stephen. I want to meet you today. I can't. I'd be afraid. Afraid of what would happen. Lindy, did you see that screwdriver kit anywhere? It's in the kitchen drawer. Oh, okay. Hey. What's the matter? Nothing. Were you mad about something? Me playing golf today? Did did you want me to do something? Did we plan something and I forgot? No. Really. Nothing. It's not an anniversary oh, or something. Don't be silly. Tell you what. I don't mind skipping the golf. How about us driving over to the Wilsons and going swimming? You go and play golf. I'm fine. Well, if you wanted to see the Wilsons for a couple of weeks now, I'd like it. I don't want to. Well, you did last weekend. Well, I don't this weekend. Okay. Okay. Lindy? What? You upset with me? No. There's nothing. Just leave me alone for a while, Ben. I've got a headache. Well, you want me to get you an aspirin? No, no, I don't want anything. Just leave me alone. Well, all right. You'd have to bite my head off. Go away. Go away. Thanks a lot, I will. Charlie's picking me up in five minutes. You can take the cup. Gee, you're sure dressed up. Why shouldn't I be? Well, no reason, I guess. What, what time do you think you'll be back? I don't know. Oh. I can't tell you. I've made up my mind. I've got to meet Stephen, talk to him. I've got to know one way or the other. I don't want to waste my life. There's still time. If he asks me to go away with him today, maybe I will. You'll get along, Ben. You'll find a nice, dull girl, and she'll make you happy. I don't know what I want, but I can't make you happy. Not now. 
You can't make me happy. I'm still in love with another man. You want to tell me? What? What's going on? Nothing is going on. Well, I don't believe you. Was there something in that letter you got? Did that do I'm it? I'm going to be late, Ben. I'll talk to you later. Late for what? You said you were going shopping. Ben! Well, I want to know. If, I, if I've done something, I've got a right to know. Now, you're not leaving here until you tell me. I told you. You haven't done anything. You haven't done anything at all. Nothing. Ever. What does that mean? Give me the keys to the car, will you, please? No. All right, I'll take a cab. Now, you put that phone down. We're going to talk. Now, come on. What? If you stop me, Ben, I'll leave you. I mean it. What are you talking about? Why? Why? I can't tell you now. I've got to go. Please give me the key. Have you gone crazy? Will you, will you let me use the phone? No, I won't. This talk of leaving the whole thing. Now, you're going to tell me. It's ten after one, Ben. I've been waiting four years for one thirty. I'm not going to be late for it. For what? What? This. You won't understand. And I haven't got time to explain now, but I've got to go. It was the letter. Huh? Who's Stephen? I was in love with him a month before I met you. I'd been in love with him for over a year. You didn't tell me. I thought it was finished. I wanted it to be. You, you still love him? I don't know. Yes. I, I think so. What about us? I don't know. Will you give me the keys? You haven't been happy with me. Yes. I guess so. I tried to be. Can I say something? I'm going to be late. If, if you waited for years and he has two, five minutes won't make any difference. Now, he'll, he'll wait. What's the use of talking now? I can't think. Well, neither can I, but I've got the right to say a couple of things. I know I'm not like a lot of the guys you used to go out with. I'm kind of square, I guess. I thought you liked it. You married me. I fell in love with you because you were everything I'd wanted in a woman. It was exciting. It's always been exciting. I love you. You go out of here and remember that. I love you. Now go on. Go meet your boyfriend. And when you're through, come back and... Tell me where I stand. I'll be here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I've hurt you. You've been good to me. Perhaps it would have been different if I hadn't got the letter. I'm sorry. Of course, Linda never got the letter, so maybe it worked out. I kind of hope they moved out of town. That's what I mean. You never can figure whether it's a good thing or a bad thing the letters end up in my department. So I burn them, and this letter for Ben I burn, and I hope it's the end of Stephen. How you doing, boy? Hmm? Hey, snap out of it. Huh? Oh. Hi, Herb. You've been reading them letters again. What <laughs> gives with you? This job gives me the creeps. Come to think of it, you're starting in giving me the creeps, too. But me for the open road. I'm putting in for a transfer today. And you'd better get out of it, too. It's getting you down, boy. Romance is produced and directed by Anthony Ellis, who also wrote today's story. Starring in Lovely Dead Letter were John Daner and Virginia Gregg. Others in the cast were Parley Bear, Herb Ellis, and Peter Leeds. Musical supervision by Jerry Goldsmith. This is Dan Coverley, inviting you to hear Romance, transcribed next week at this same time. <laughs> ¶¶
Is the United Community Campaign underway in your town? By uniting and asking for your support, the various agencies that participate in the United Community Campaign make it possible for you to give to worthwhile efforts in an easy, business-like way. This was a public service message from CBS Radio.